You are listening to This is Oklahoma, hosted by Mike Hearn, telling stories of Oklahomans and those that have made it their home. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of This is Oklahoma. Mike Hearn here, your host, back with another episode. Exciting news. This podcast is presented by the Oklahoma Hall of Fame, who have been telling Oklahoma's story through its people since 1927. Follow them online at oklahomahof.com, and then definitely follow them on Instagram for all the information that you need, because I'm sure that's where you follow us as well, at Oklahoma HOF. Let's get into today's episode. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of This is Oklahoma. Mike Hoon here, your host, back with another episode down in Wewoka today with Dylan Cooper um, at the Tattooed Teacher 87. Is that right on Instagram? Yes, sir. Sick. Uh, mate, I really appreciate you having me down here today. It's a special yeah. day for you. Yeah, man. Thanks um, for making the trip. It appreciate means a lot it. to come down and be a part of this and, and you know, have a, have a bit of a chat with, with you guys and, and the guys that you've had come in today, which we'll get into in a little bit. But... I mean, for everyone listening, I guess, short little elevator pitch, who are you and what do you do? Uh, Yeah, I'm a full-time teacher and coach here in Oklahoma. I teach at the Academy of Seminole, and um, I run an outreach center here in Wawoka called the Mindset Academy, and that's what today was. It's our official grand opening, open house, and then tonight we're doing like a benefit costume party. So, um, yeah, I've been teaching for five years now prior to that I worked in the mental health sector as a counselor in the juvenile systems and now I'm here and my facility is pretty much just kind of like my lifetime work you know serving in the military working with you know um, working with kids in the juvenile sector different mental health places and that's basically what the the result of my facility was it's just a lifetime work you know yeah four years in the making yeah that's yep, awesome. Yep, took me four years total. Yeah. And so before, I mean, we get to all this, obviously it's four years in the making, but taking all the way back, are you born and raised here? Yeah, yeah, actually uh, I grew up here. Most of my family are from here. Um, super small town, you know, yeah. um, but like small towns, we don't have a lot of resources and things for kids to do. That's kind of how it was when I was growing up too. So mm-hmm. when I came back, this was my first school that I started teaching and coaching at. So once I realized that things were kind of the same, that's when I started working towards, you know, creating the change that I wanted to see. So, yeah. So you, so you grow up here, go to high school here, go to, uh, and then when you graduate high school, you, do you go to college or do you go straight in the military? Uh, you know, I started like messing with the college idea, but I realized it wasn't for me mm-hmm. at that point, you know? Um, Decided to join the army, so I went in the military and did that. And then when I got honorably discharged, that's when I tried to figure out what I wanted to do next. I thought I wanted to work in the counseling sector somehow, so that's what yeah. I started going to school for. And then that's when I started working at the juvenile center, you know. So that's really where I got my feet wet when sure. it comes to like working with kids, you know. So. Yeah. Where does where does the itch, I guess, or the passion for like counseling? Like, why do you decide after you get out of the military to go into counseling? Um, I I really think it's just from like my upbringing. My mom's been a nurse since I can remember, you know. And growing up here in Wawoka, it's just you know poverty rate's pretty high, you know, like right between forty forty five percent. So. Growing up, I mean, I have great parents, but I had a lot of friends that didn't. So it was just kind of you know, instilled in me by them to just look out for others because I seen them do it all the time. Yeah. I'd have friends come stay with me when, whenever they needed it. And then I think in the military when I seen, you know, veterans struggling and stuff like that, that, that was maybe something I wanted to pursue. So that's what I started yeah. doing with college, you know? Yeah. I think a lot of people like don't a lot of people just they go away from home and then they never come back right right right. and then if they do come back they see that nothing's changed and then they yeah. uh, continue to leave right when you came back and you saw that i guess nothing and nothing much had changed but you wanted to make a difference like that's it's very different and very special and, and something that's a unique quality that you have that most people don't have you yeah. see you put it down to your parents giving you that well that and I don't know. I'll, I always tell people you you can't fake passion. Mm. 
you know? And um, I think in order to figure out what it is you were meant to do, you have to go and experience a lot, you know? You have to go through obstacles, you have to experience setbacks, and you have to, like, try a lot of different stuff. That's why I worked in the juvenile center for a while, then I worked at different, you know, rehabs and stuff like that, just getting every opportunity that I could, and then... Once I came here to start teaching and coaching, that's when I realized, you know, things were basically the same. Yeah. But I wasn't just a kid anymore. I was someone that's got some some training and skills and education, and that's what I wanted to, you know, put it put it to work. And that's basically what my facility is. It was just a lack of resources that I seen, and I'm one of those people that instead of you know, I'm not going to bitch about a problem if I can't offer a solution. So I bitched about a problem, but I had the solution. But yeah. small towns aren't too excited about change, you know, and it's something that had never been done. So when I mentioned it, a lot of people had negative feedback just because I just didn't think they understand, you know, the deeper reasoning for it. So yeah. it was basically just I felt like it was my calling, you know, to get this up and going. I wasn't necessarily excited about it because I knew the amount of work it was going to take <laughs> and how much it was going to suck. But like I tell people, like when you when you know you were meant to do something specific, you know, in life, you have to like seize the opportunity. And I think a lot of people get a misconception that it's going to be something easy or perfect and it's not, you know? Yeah. For me, it's like, damn, I don't want to buy this 100-year-old building for money I don't have and just go through all these times of uncertainty, but I knew it's what I was put here to do, so I just wasn't afraid yeah. to take it on. Yeah, so so you come back, you get discharged from the military, you come back, you decide, I need to make change in the world, I want to make a change in the world, my passion is this, and then you go to school for it to get, like, so you can actually teach. Where do you go to school? Um, well, you know, through the military, I, I took advantage of doing college classes when I could, but your training, you know, always, always came first. Mm -hmm. Um, like I said, I was never set on, I want to do this in the mental health sector. I just knew I was meant to do a lot more. You know, a lot of people transition out of the military and they just don't really know what they want to do. And my main goal was not to get, you know, a good paying job, which money's great. Obviously, as a teacher, we don't get any of it. But uh, I've always wanted to have a job or create something where I knew that I could really create change and change lives. And for me, that started working in the juvenile systems. Um, I would pick up things from different facilities that I liked, that I didn't like. I learned how to work with all types of kids. And, uh, you know, I had my own approach when I worked with those kids. I did a lot of stuff outside the box, but I had an impact on a lot of those kids. And then once I went into teaching, I kind of did the same thing. You know, I took my own approach and and it, it paid off, you know, because I built good relationships with my kids. And then it was like it was slowly building up. OK, I worked with kids in this environment. Now I'm teaching and coaching. But the thing was with teaching... Um, it's not that challenging to me, maybe because I was in the military, I worked in the juvenile systems. I don't, I'm not one of those teachers that are like, uh, you know, it gets stressed out easily. It's, it was, it wasn't fulfilling for me. Sure. You know, I enjoy it's not fulfilling. And after my, when I was my first year of teaching, that's when I was like, damn, I thought this was what I was supposed to be doing. But then I was like, okay, maybe I'm supposed to be doing more, you know? And that's when this facility came to mind. And I'm like, yup, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Because yeah. my own facility, I can create it the way I want to. I can run it the way I want to. And I can work with kids uh, in my own way, which is the biggest thing, you know? Because schools are so dictated on what they can and what they can't teach. And here, I wanted to have it unique you know and use stuff that i know works with kids and that's kind of how this place came yeah came to life yeah it's and i and, you know, i followed you on social media and seen the stories and and just seen the kids in here working out and you know like 
even just from the stories, you can tell that they're going to be better human beings because they're in your work in teamwork together, they're going through, you know, and fitness has such a tie with mental health, that there's such a, like a parallel with go work out, you know, work together and sweat together and throw heavy weight around and go through struggle and okay, great. You're going to be fit and it's going to build your body, but mentally it puts you in such a better place than that. Right. And I think that's the biggest misconception is that to do treatment with mental health, it's got to be something fancy out of a textbook and it doesn't, you know, for down here, just kids having a place to be where they feel safe and comfortable and they're in a good loving environment. That's a lot for them. And then when you get them working out or on the grappling mats or boxing, you know, that's when you can, uh, that's when you can really push them out of their comfort zone and teach them a lot about fighting through a little pain and discomfort, you know, because yeah. we live in a world where we'd rather just give kids advice like medicine, and but it's really, you just have to teach kids how to process stuff. We need to teach them the, the difference between being depressed and just being stressed and anxious and a lot of therapists and counselors and teachers have their own methods of teaching, and this is just what I use. You know, I use these wrestling mats, the weight room, the boxing, and that's where, how I strip the layers off. And then through the process, you build a relationship with these kids, and that's when you can start focusing on stuff that they may need. You know, a lot of kids, they're already good to go, but it's preparing them for the stuff that's like awaiting them in the real world. But people don't realize working with kids, especially kids that may not come from the best home environments, you have to build a rapport with these kids. You know, I've worked with some of these kids for two years straight before we even talked about anything deep below the surface, you know, because so many kids around here are used to coaches showing up one season, leaving, show, having a, you know, a male got a guy come into their life and then them leaving. So for me here, it's about building the rapport and being consistent, you know, showing up when I say I'm going to. And that's why I tell teachers today, like your, your biggest, uh, your biggest asset or resource is your actions, like who you are, like not who you're in the classroom, like every day, like you have to show up. So I just try to lead by example every day, just try to be a good person. And yeah. that's how I'm having, you know, the, the success I'm having here. I'm yeah. just being original and authentic and I'm not trying to portray something I'm not, but you know, some people get it, some people don't, but just my experiences in life so far, it, it's easier for me to relate to kids. So, yeah. Well, and also, especially in a town that you grew up in, right? Yeah. You've been here. It's, yeah, it, yeah. if you came into this town and, and you went from here and they, you know, like, well, you don't understand, but you've right. grown up here, like, you know exactly how it is. And it might have gotten worse. It might have gotten better. Hopefully, it's getting better now, thankfully, because of what you're doing. But, you know, it's easy to build, easier to build a rapport because you've been through it. And you say, look, I've been through this stuff. I've been in the military. I've right. been screamed at, whatever it is. And we've yeah. gone through mental health. And you have friends in the military who've struggled with mental health. Right. 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 Yeah. And it goes back to you have to build a relationship with these kids. You can't fake it. You know, yeah. you can't you can't fake passion. Either you want to do it or you don't. Yeah. And what I don't like about the school systems is the way they're just, they're set up, you know? There's so much stuff going on. Teachers don't really get the opportunity to teach and get to know the kids, which is why when I put the word out, I'm basically going to work on creating my own school outside mm -hmm. of school because school's not enough, yeah. you know? School's a safe haven for a lot of kids, but that safe haven is no longer exist at 3 p.m. And on Saturdays and Sundays and during holidays, like kids need something more. But what's bad about this location is we're not in Tulsa or Oklahoma City or Yukon where there's resources. Here, you're confined to this area. Like, yeah. you're stuck here. And there's not much here but trouble for kids to find, which is why, you know, like I said, I wanted to do this in the first place. But I wanted it to have a mission to where we weren't just wasting time. We were mm -hmm. working on something. So yeah. that's really it, man, to really get these kids prepared for the stuff that's that's awaiting. Yeah. I mean, it's why it's called the Mindset Academy. I don't – we're not geared towards college or the military. We're geared towards when you go in life and face those obstacles, we want you to have the mindset necessary to, like, push through. You know, or when you find out your mom has cancer, or you, that we're all going to have bad days. It's inevitable. And I don't want to put them in this bubble. I, instead, I expose it 
I expose them to the stress and the discomfort here so they get conditioned to it. Mm -hmm. And if nothing bad happens, that's great, but it's going to. And when it does, I just want them to be ready, you know? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And even, you know, even when you said like having those deeper conversations that, you know, you got kids here that are growing up that are now going to college, right? Like right. they may have scholarships because right, right, of the right. stuff that they're doing here. It might be right. wrestling, weightlifting, it might be football, whatever, basketball, but they're coming here and learning mindset and, and grit and, and working out for you, but also like it's, you know, it's making them better human beings. So when they do turn 18 and they do go to college and then when they graduate from college, they can go into the workforce and actually probably may, you know, get better jobs than, than, than they thought even was possible because of the, the, you know, the mindset that they've built on. Yeah. It's, it's literally, this is just an example of the ripple effect but I always say, you know, people will, in order to make a ripple, you have to make a splash and some people aren't willing to, you know, they want to talk about it, but they don't want to like pull the trigger on it and take the action. So that's what the, the change I'm creating isn't in here necessarily. It's the change that these kids are going to create once they leave here. Yeah. You know, that's how I explain it. That's my definition of my legacy is that whenever I leave this earth, there's nothing left to me to give because I give bits and pieces of myself to every kid that comes through here. And then once they go into the real, into the real world, I want them to pass those parts on. Yeah. And that's how I work on creating change. Yeah. And build, like said, building legacy through others and, and then yeah. they passing it on to them as well. That's, that's, I mean, special. And it's, you know, yeah, I know it, for you, this is just the beginning in a long uh, process and a long thing there's things that you have planned out but the good thing is now that we're you have this facility after four years of manifestation and talking to the right people and putting it out there and listening to the crap that people have been telling you like you know you told a story earlier when when we did the grand opening earlier that, that you know when you had the building and you bought it there's a guy said can you imagine some idiot bought this building and yeah, you walk straight back and inside and really man like every everything I everything I everything I preach I, I practice and it's a reflection of this entire journey, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, every single day of this process has sucked. But what got me through it was the way I've been conditioning my mind for the past, I don't even know how many years now, mm -hmm. you know? Like, you're not gonna... When I set my mind and I know it's what I'm supposed to accomplish, I'm gonna, like, make it happen. Yeah. Like, I'm gonna do everything I can, and that's what I'm trying to pass on to these kids. But a lot of them, they've seen this process, so they already know, you know, what's what's possible when yeah. you put your mind to whatever it is you want. So it's been a long journey. Um, I've already got to impact a lot of kids here, and now the kids I've been working with, they're gonna be the leaders of the next group that's coming in, and mm -hmm. I'm just trying to create that cycle, you know? Yeah. I've heard a thing, like, leaders create leaders, and that's what I'm trying to do, you know? Yeah. I want them to go out in the world and pass it on, so. Yeah. Tell me about the book. Oh, yeah, I did write a book. Sometimes I forget yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, I wrote a book, uh, really just documenting my journey, because I thought, I thought it could be applicable to just about anyone mm -hmm. in the sense that it documents me getting out of the military, going into college, pursuing this degree, not pursuing that degree because I thought I was supposed to do this and really just my journey and what it took to get this up and going. So sold, sold quite a few copies. It, it, it did good and it's gotten a lot of feedback. Thankfully, nobody's on Amazon's left me a crappy review yet. They've all been five stars so far. So <laughs> yeah. if y'all's listening to this, give me a five star. No, yeah. but uh, yeah, I just did it out of uh, another thing, man. I'm like, I feel like I was supposed to write this book. I've always wanted to, and I've tried in the past and it never worked. And I think it was because this was the piece that needed to glue it all together. And now I'm going to use that book to start speaking more at colleges to let teachers know what they're, you know, waiting, yeah. you know, because I didn't go to school to become a teacher. So nobody wired me to teach a certain way. Nobody told me how to teach what to do. I just yeah. went in there with the skills I already had and I applied them and that's what's helped me yeah. be successful because teaching, you have kids? No, sir. Yeah, me either. Kids are the worst. No. <laughs> but, uh, you know, um, teaching is challenging when the kid doesn't want to learn, when the kid doesn't love themselves, when the kid doesn't have anyone at home rooting for them. Those mm -hmm. kids are hard to teach. 
because there's no textbook that can like help you with that. That's something you have to learn, you know, through mm-hmm. life, through living. Yeah. And that's the skills that I've been given and I've developed, you know, so the books helped a lot of, you know, teachers. When I talk about situations where kids were acting up instead mm-hmm. of sending them to the principal's office, you know, take them to go get ice cream or eat a snow cone or whatever and just, you know, talk yeah. it out because that's, we're, we're all humans at the end of the day. So I, I take a humanistic approach to teaching, but I document everything from three years ago, getting this up and going. So mm-hmm. when people's reading it, they can actually follow it, but they can actually see that the stuff I'm talking about, I actually practice and it yeah. actually works. So yeah. it's beneficial to a lot of people too. I mean, I had people say it gave them good feedback when, you know, cause I left a good paying job to become a teacher when teacher pay was really bad when they were doing the walkout. That's when I had started, you know, and everything on the outside was like, no, this is a stupid idea. But I'm like, no, I feel like I'm supposed to be here, you know, teaching. Yeah. It's deeper than that. So tell, tell me about the look on people's faces when you show up to school for the first day. I mean, the, oh. the, the reason that your Instagram is the tattooed teacher. Did you ride in on your bike as well? No, I wish I'd. I didn't have a, <laughs> I didn't have a bike back then. I was yeah. still super broke. I'm kind of broke now, but not super broke. Um, oh man, it's hit and miss. Um, some kids would be like, "Oh, your tattoos are awesome," and then some kids are just like, "Is this guy gonna like try to eat me?" Or like, "What's he doing?" And some of the other teachers are looking at me like I was just like the grossest thing ever yeah you know and then I tell them my story and then they try to be nice and more chill and it's like no you're just like talking in the teacher's lounge like yeah um but really man it, it just goes back to what I try to represent like yeah. I'm authentic you may not like it or agree with it but this is this is who I am you know I'm covered in tattoos I cuss way too much I'm trying to work on it um I'm a teacher I don't make a lot of money I don't like going out much. I just like being here, hanging out with my kids. It's just who I am, you know? And yeah. I've always had good relationships with other teachers, you know? But it, it's funny hearing some of the parents, like, after they get to know me, like, this is what I thought, you know? Like, I had this one parent say, I went home and, like, researched what tattoos meant, and I could have yeah. sworn you were in, like, this skinhead <laughs> gang, and I built this story up, and I was coming up with ways to get my kid out of your class yeah. but then it's funny because that kid comes back after the first day and he's like man there's this coach like coach cooper like he's so cool and she's like you completely like brought him out of his shell like he's a different kid he's mm-hmm. got confidence and they're like but i thought the opposite when i first met you yeah. i thought you were gonna be and i'm like well that should that should teach you something yeah. you know and i read a book recently and it's like instead of like judging come from a place of like curiosity you know, instead of like, oh, you're doing a podcast? Well, that's, what's the point? Like, yeah. hey, why do you want to do that? Like, why do you have so many tattoos? Why do you go from mental health to, you know? Yeah. And again, it's just, it is what it is here in the Bible Belt, being judged, but it's just another method I can use to teach people. Like, hey, yeah. don't judge a book. And it's funny because even now they're like, well, are you like a, a full-time teacher or like a substitute or <laughs> have you had inside? Did you have to get one of those <laughs> fake degrees? Are you, do you just teach on like zoom meetings and, yeah. but which is what 90% of teachers are doing right I now. I know. Right. But yeah, Crazy. I mean, I've, I'll have people stop in here and they'll be like, Hey, I was wanting to see if I could talk to the owner. And I'm like, it's me. What's up? And they're like, no, not like the manager, like the guy that owns it. And I'm like, Oh, that's me. And you can tell her like, no, it can't be you. And yeah. then they're just like, Oh, uh, but yeah. You just got to give people a reason to get past their, you know, Mm -hmm. their judgment, but it is what it is, man. Yeah. So when, when was the last time you had a tattoo and how many did you have? What do you mean? Like before? I mean, like, yeah. Is it something that's just an ongoing thing or did you just all uh, all in one go over the space of two or three years get a bunch? Yeah, man, I started getting them pretty heavy when I was active duty in the army. This was back before i iPhones that just came out, no social media. Sure. Nobody was tracking what you did. I just showed up one day like a big ass tramp set. My mom was like, Oh my God, you're gonna ruin your damn life. Like Dylan, why? Like literally that's what she said. You should have interviewed her. She was like, <laughs> You ruined your life and like Yeah. It was like, Wow, that's pretty uh it's pretty extreme, you know, but yeah. 
again, it comes from a place of she knew who I was in, you mm-hmm. know, and I believe people every day can manifest in a lot of different ways, you know? Yeah. If me and you talk tomorrow, it could be we're two different people, like always. And, yeah. you know, my time in the military was just different, and I took a different route than a lot of people, and it was just a part of what shaped me into who I am today, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. yeah, mom definitely didn't like the tattoos to, <laughs> to begin with, but she's a little more... It's more accepted now. She's a little more open about it now. She kind of likes them a little bit more. Because back then, they weren't really acceptable. There wasn't too much of a meaning behind them, whereas I'm sure now there's there's a few that have some serious meanings. Yeah, I mean, all of mine, I've I've gotten all mine for reasons, and I I never had a dumb one, you know? It wasn't one of those things like, I want to look cool. Yeah, I feel like nowadays, a lot of people's like, oh, I want to look cool, which... yeah. Mine had meaning, so yeah, mom definitely hated him though, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tell me about the bike, the love for bikes, because you don't just like happen to just have a, a, a sick Harley Davidson out of just thinking, oh, you know what, I'm going to like with tattoos, I'm going to get a bike because it's cool. Like that's, that's a sick piece of kit that you have. Um, I like the freedom it brings. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like the only thing that can really put life into perspective is death. And it sounds morbid, but when you're on a Harley doing 80, you're close to it. Nothing else like really matters. Yeah. You're just focused in the moment. And uh, I've never been the best about taking care of my own mental health well-being, so it's something I've been working on. And the Harley's just one of my mechanisms that I use. Yeah, I use this place, my Harley, fishing, playing guitar. And the older I've gotten, the more I've realized that there's really no past or future. There's only like the present and the now. Yeah. So I just focus on being happy and pursuing what I want. But mm-hmm. that was the hardest part of this whole journey was just being authentic in who you are. I was there was a time I was chasing all the wrong stuff for the wrong reasons and then yeah. once I stepped into who I truly was, my life got a lot better. I mean, I took a pay cut, but you know, I I go to sleep happy I wake up happy excited about doing what I'm doing and that's what I've always yeah. been focused on so yeah. I mean it's it's awesome and to come to this day like and, and see you know you have JP Tanel here and Randall Pitch here like I mean, if you know, if we're listening, you don't know who those people are. Just Google both of them <laughs> and just go to Instagram and see the the you know the impact that they both have. You know, JP being in the military, being in the SEAL teams, and um, working with Jocko and alongside of some other very impressive people, and then Randall for all his businesses that he's done and everything. And obviously, you and Randall share the tattoo. Well, JP's tatted up too. You, you share that passion too. Yeah, I mean, um, I, th- I think it's just. Um if you know them on a personal level, you know they're authentic. Yeah. And I like to think I'm authentic. Mm-hmm. And I feel like authentic people recognize authentic people, or as the gangsters say, real neck, real recognize real, or yeah. however it goes. But, uh, yeah, I mean, when we connected, I didn't try to be something that I wasn't. Yeah. You know? I'm like, hey, man, I'm a broke-ass teacher in Oklahoma. These teachers are doing a walkout, and I'm trying to buy this building. <laughs> they're like, oh, that's crazy and you know they yeah. had their own thing going on and I was just like I'll I'll keep y'all updated you know I'll keep y'all posted it wasn't like a relationship or out of the gate was this just, just through Instagram yeah Instagram and then we connected on calls and stuff yeah. so it was never right out of the gate we'll do this for you and that's never what I wanted you know I, I wanted to form relationships with like minded people because the other I've gotten I realized it's hard to come along authentic people that you know put off the same vibes and frequency as me so I just seen them as people that um I thought they would be uh just beneficial to have in my life yeah and we just connected there was no hey if you want to come here you have to do there isn't there's no there's there's no motives involved yeah you know anytime they've needed anything from me which isn't much it's like name it and i'll do it i don't want anything in return and it's vice versa you know i mean they came here on their own terms they didn't ask for anything and i didn't ask that you know i didn't demand anything it's just an authentic relationship but i've always thought that once you once you really 
go through the process of figuring out who it is and what you want. And when you take on a mission like this, I knew I would attract the right minded people. I just knew it would take some time. Yeah. And it did because I was, you know, a year into this process and then we connected and then it slowly transitioned into a cool friendship. So, yeah. Yeah. It, 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 that's a great lesson too. It's like <coughs> you haven't reached out to them saying, Hey, I'm, this is what I'm going to do. Yeah. It's like, Hey, look, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep you updated. But the fact that you are doing it, right. There's so many people out there that send messages or in DMS or whatever to people. They're like, Hey, I need help doing this. Okay, yeah, yeah, well, what yeah. have you done yet? Yeah. And they haven't done anything cause they haven't started. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know? uh, cause you know, Randall, I think he has like, I don't know, 300,000 followers yeah. or, or something. Um, yeah, and it wasn't even, it was organic. It's what me and Randall were talking about. You know, he has people that reaches out every day. Yeah. Just like I do, and I'm sure you do. Hey, do this so I can get this in return. You know, it was just, uh, now we're just cool friends. We just send random stupid ass videos. I mean, it's just an authentic thing. It just took time, but it was one of those things, you know, like when I first messaged him, we hadn't talked for like another, I don't know, year and a half. Then we talked again. Yeah. And he was like, oh, you got the building bought, you know? And I'm like, yeah, I did this. He's like, dude, that's so, you know, it's freaking crazy. Like, good job. What can I do? What do you think? And, yeah. you know, more time. And it just slowly developed into, into what it is. And that's not just with them, too. It's just a lot of amazing people I've mm -hmm. met along the way. But yeah. those two dudes are really special to me just because... You know, um, it's not every day two people will make a trip to come to this small town. And it's just because they understand, like, how much it meant to me. And they've seen the whole process from the beginning. Yeah. You know, I remember when me and JP first connected, I was just trying to buy the building. <laughs> and I remember he was like, how's it going? And I'm like, dude, I'm so, like, fucking overwhelmed. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. Because it's like, I don't have extra money to put into this thing because I'm a yeah. teacher. Like, I have to make ends meet barely just being a teacher. Yeah. And he'd always just, you know, drop some knowledge on me and, you know, just help me get back on the path. It's good to have people that will hold you accountable to and push you to yeah. know what you're capable of. Because a lot of people would have been like, oh, Okay, let's just go to B-dubs like it is what it is and there's yeah. people it's like you can do it man you're just feeling sorry for yourself like let's figure it out and yeah. the older I've gotten the more I focus on getting those types of people in my life and the other ones out completely yeah. and that's what's really you know helped me get to where I am today what's making like to that point like people say you know well let's let's just go to B-dubs because that's how it is that's how it's always been that's how it's always, yeah. always is in this town which can be the same as our parents and our grandparents and then it takes someone like yourself and now these kids that are going to make the change yeah and those kids know I mean I believe the way you do anything is how you'll do mm -hmm. everything you yeah. know like you coming down here like squared away good to go all your equipment you're like hey we can't have people talking get these people out of here it's got to be quality i'm like that's cool man like you're yeah. about your shit and that's it's it's all it's all in the details man that's why yeah. i tell my kids you know and they'll turn around and hold me accountable too and that's how you create it yeah you know it's just the the way you do anything is how you're gonna do everything and that's what i that's what i tell them man and we all have those days of weakness where we don't feel like doing anything you know but yeah. that's why i tell people like discipline is key you know, motivation is cool, but you can only read so many books and listen to yeah. so many podcasts and go to so many workshops before you got to get up and just step into the unknown. But the unknown just scares the shit out of people. Of course. Yeah. Because there's so many, um, there's so many things that could go wrong, you know, yeah. but I always remember I'm on borrowed time, you know, I could be taken from this earth at any moment. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to pursue whatever whatever I want, you know? Yeah. And that's what I try to tell the kids. Yeah. I don't tell them to go yeah, out and anything crazy, but. Starting is the hardest thing, isn't it? Uh, and, you know, starting it, just getting everything good and just making that initial, I'm going to go and do something. Like, that's the hardest thing. And then right. you get one day under your belt and then you get another day under your belt and then you just keep going forward, right. Right? right? Tell me, so about this place, like, what is it for people? What do they do? What days are you open? You know, what nights? What do the kids do when you come here? And we'll, we'll finish on that. Yeah, so uh, the way it's 
started was, you know, I'd been working with kids at the school um, already. Mm -hmm. And so when I was down here building and working on stuff, I'd go ahead and let them come in, you know, because these are kids I'd been working with for a couple years. And uh, now it's set up to where when kids apply, there's like a four-week intake process they have to make it through Mm -hmm. to kind of see who's serious about getting better and who's just kind of talking, you know, but... Yeah, we meet at least four days a week right now. And then we just dropped a new website that's got the application for like new kids or parents that want to get their kids signed up. And mm-hmm. then it details our exact curriculum. You know, martial arts program is part of it. And it's not, oh, my son doesn't do martial arts. Well, he's not going to be here then yeah. because it's part of it. You know, we push you out of your comfort zone. We make you stressed out, mm-hmm. make you pissed. And then we teach you how to deal with it. And through this process, they start figuring out themselves. And that's the whole point of all this, man, is because I'm sure you know that when you're in high school, you have your future like figured out for you already, whether it's by your mom or your friends or your counselor. And you're like, I don't even know who I am. Yeah. You're going to go to OU because everyone in the family is going to OU. Yeah. And down here, it's like, I'm trying to open them up to just thinking for themselves. Like kids aren't being engaged in the school systems with critical thinking most kids graduate and have no sense of self. Mm -hmm. So down here, that's what I push them to do because when you figure out what you're capable of in the weight room or on the grappling mats or in the boxing gloves, it builds confidence and you realize you have a lot more in you than you thought. Then you start thinking, damn, if I can do this, what else can I do? Like I want to go to college, but I thought about going to the military or something. Maybe I can do this. So yeah, that's what... That's what we do, but our program, it's its pretty simple. It's simple, but it's complex, you know? Yeah. I made it to where I took different aspects of my time in the mental health sector and the juvenile system, and I just created what it is today, and it's, uh, it's had an impact on a lot of kids, and I'm pretty excited about what we got yeah. planned for them, so... Is uh, I know uh, like being here today and, and, and hearing JP speak and, and just kind of listening to family talk about it and obviously grandma's here, she, you know, mum's real proud, sister's here. Uh, and I kind of, when Randall speak, uh, when, when JP was speaking and, and I kind of looked over and you, you kind of like sat standing out the way and, you know, a lot of people would be like standing there like, you're very humble. You don't like being talked to, like, you don't like, I don't think you like it when people say good things of what you've done, because I know that this is not the end. Does that make sense? Yeah, for sure. I, I mean, the reason why, the reason why I'm doing this is for the kids, you know, it's never about me. Yeah. I mean, if getting interviews and getting, you know, big name public figures but it goes back to just being authentic you know I am who I am I have tattoos I'm sh- communication I'm bad at communicating like you know it took me like two weeks to reply <laughs> here uh, but yeah. yeah this is it's just I don't know man it's just uh, I don't think I'll ever be satisfied yeah like i'm not i'm never be proud of myself what i'm proud of is like the change that i'm able to create and that change isn't about me it's it's about my kids so i'm completely obnoxious when it comes to bragging about my kids i can tell you everything about my kids that they've done stuff they're gonna the stuff they've overcame like that's what i talk about i can't be humble there i'll probably borderline like way too annoying when it comes to talking about the kids but that's that's what I'm most proud of you know this I mean I like it but it's not it's weird man it's it's a tool it's what I was put here to do yeah so I can't really take pride in like doing what I was meant here what I meant but a lot of people also don't have the awareness that I do of knowing that this is it like this is what I was put here to do so for me it's like I'm more thankful that I got to pull this off. It sucked. I mean, Mm. there was a lot of pain and late nights and misery, but I embraced every day of it. And that's what you, I had to do because otherwise it's easy to, to not follow through. You know, there's a lot of like, what are they called? Like daily affirmations or whatever, Mm -hmm. but that's like, you don't believe it. Like if it's not in you, 
you know, studying psychology, I knew about the subconscious and the, uh, the unconscious mind. And four years ago, when I knew I wanted to buy this building, when I knew I wanted to create this, I became obsessed with it. I yeah. would drive by it every morning to work and see it abandoned with no electricity. And I'd be like, this is going to be my this place. And I programmed it to where the my unconscious mind took the wheel. And I just sat back and pivoted and adjusted whenever I needed to. But as far as being humble, man, it's just, I don't feel like I've done enough to be proud, Mm -hmm. proud yet. Like I'm proud of my kids. I'm proud of what this place is, is going to do, but I don't know. I just come from a place of awareness and understanding that this is, this is what I was put here to do. Yeah. You know, I'm not a, I'm not a religious person. I'm a very spiritual person. That's just of the past, you know, four or five years, just working on myself. And that was the main thing, man, focusing on awareness and consciousness and understanding what I wanted and what I didn't want. And that was the scariest part to go through because it's like, damn, I thought it was going to lead me to like a Lamborghini or a nice house. It's, I need to buy this building. Like, (laughs) this is cool. But it was like, like I said, on the day I knew I was going to, start the process I, I was fucking excited yeah but nobody could understand why and it's because like i found out like what the fuck i needed to do what i was yeah. put here to do so that's why i was like so hyped about yeah taking this journey on and that's what kind of kept me from just not giving up mm-hmm. you know like the universe will give you what you want but only when you like fight your ass off for it yeah and i fought a lot to get this place um up and going and I'm just excited that the kids finally have a place to call home yeah you know some of the kids are already out in the real world doing good stuff and the best is yet to come so I stay grounded just by understanding that this place isn't about me yeah I mean I take pride in saying it that it's mine but I'm just a humble kid that grew up in a double wide trailer in the middle of Oklahoma at the end of the day so yeah I just remind myself that I'm not any, and it goes back to lead, leadership one-on-one, you know? I'm not too good for anybody else, so I just, mm-hmm. I'm always going to treat people the way I would want to be treated. Sounds cliche, you yeah. know, but just because I've made this happen doesn't mean, you know, what mean what means something is uh the change that we're creating and the change that the kids are going to create. So yeah. that's what matters to me. Yeah. That, that splash that you spoke about earlier, that impact, that initial impact, and then the ripples of the kids. Yeah. Legacy going down the line through the years, through the yep. decades, you know, and, and maybe, you know, this, f- 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 the, this facility is going to be a 30,000 square foot facility in 15 years or whatever it is, you know, like, yeah. and they got, you got thousands of kids, you got places like this across the country, right. not just here, but right. this was the initial splash. Right. And it's awesome to, to be down here, to have this opportunity to sit with you and share the story, man. This is special and it's. Oh, for sure, man. I mean, thanks for coming. And yeah. it's funny because people think it's going to be. They're like, it's exactly what I thought it would be. It's a cool ass building, and you talk, you seem yeah. just like you'd be. And I'm like, yeah, I don't try to project yeah. something I'm not, because then that's when people will be disappointed <laughs> when they show up. And I'm like, no, yeah, this is me, man. So, but yeah, it's been a, it's been a fun journey. I've learned a lot along the way, mm-hmm. met some cool people. I mean, it's weird the way the world works, you know. One small decision, and you're. I would have probably never connected with you on Instagram. I yeah. probably none of this today would have been here. So, yeah, that's what, that's my main thing. I'm trying to tell people is just when there's some when there's a vision or a thought that just won't that won't leave you. Yeah. Like you got to pursue that. And a lot of times, it's gonna sound, you know, your idea, your your vision. You may be like, wait, that what? Yeah. But it's because, you know, you're finally becoming aware and conscious of to who you are and what you want. And then that's when you can start pursuing, like, really what it is. But yeah. you got to swallow your pride and lose your ego, like we said, and just figure it out along the way. I mean, I I have no training when it comes to getting something like this up and going. Yeah. But it's like I said, you just got to have the grit and determination and 
go back to your why, you know, mm-hmm. it wasn't about me when I'd have a bad day and I feel sorry for myself. I think about the kids I'd be letting down if I didn't go through with it. So that pushed me through. Yeah. So, uh, long-term vision. What do you see? Like you mentioned earlier, like getting the word out, right. Going and speaking in schools for teachers or even speaking on the, you know, on the national stage, kind of like what JP's doing. Like, right. So you know, now, um, I've been working on my own, uh, like a leadership agency. Mm -hmm. The plan is to market colleges for students that are going to college to become a teacher or a coach. And then I obviously created my own curriculum, the steps that I took to working with kids, what it's worked for me, because college can teach you how to teach, but they can't teach you how to deal with kids that are like, kick me out of your class. I don't want to be here. The yeah. challenge is making that kid want to be there. That's what college can't really prepare you for. That's mm-hmm. only like life lessons. So that's the next step. Um, cause I'd already done the book. It did good. And now it makes sense to just spread the word and help. If I want kids to be, it goes back on the ripple effect. And then those, once they become teachers, they can go create change too, yeah. you know? And it's, it's simple stuff. That's just not taught because a lot of even colleges and professors don't know about environments like this, you know? Yeah. It's like someone like Randall and JP could come in here and work with these kids every day and there'd be no problem because they speak that language and they've been through situations. Now you Mm -hmm. take someone that just took the traditional route and has their PhD in education, they would get washed out here. Not because the kids wouldn't respect them because there's no rapport. There's no similarities between the two. And yeah, that's what I'll be focused on, you know, teaching and leading the new generation of teachers and coaches is how to deal with, you know, mm-hmm. deeper issues with these kids and how, the humanistic approach, man. Yeah. Like, be more human. I mean, it's not that we overcomplicate stuff nowadays, you know? Yeah. Like, just be a good human and everything else will fall into place. It's awesome. Hey, I really appreciate your time. Uh, give, me, give me 45 minutes to, ch- to share some stories. And, oh, for uh, sure, man. You know, this is, this is really cool. For everyone listening, how can they help out? How can they buy the book? How can they follow you guys on social media? Um, our new website is the mindsetacademy.org. It's got all of our info. It's got a donate tab. My Instagram is the tattooed underscore teacher 87, I think. Mm-hmm. Um. We're located in Wawoka, Oklahoma. If anybody ever wants to stop by, mm, y'all could do that. Um, really, really, that's it. We got a yeah. donate tab on the website. Um, follow me on Instagram. I try to update stories when I'm working with the kids so people can kind of see what I'm doing here on a, yeah. on a deeper level. But yeah, as far as the process, I mean, the... The major load of the work has been done. Yeah. Now I can focus on building it up and scaling it. And so, yeah, thanks again for having me, man. It's always good to get my story out there even more, but it's better to link up with like minded people. So, yeah. thanks for having me, Appreciate man. Appreciate that. Thanks for listening, everybody, and we will catch you next episode. Cheers. This podcast was presented by the Oklahoma Hall of Fame, who've been telling Oklahoma's story through its people since 1927. Follow them online at OklahomaHOF.com and definitely on Instagram at OklahomaHOF. Catch you next episode. Cheers. Thank you for listening. We are inspired by those around us and hope that you are too. Make sure you subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast platform and leave us a review so we can keep telling your stories. For more great Oklahoma content, follow This Is Oklahoma on Facebook and Instagram.